how does Cubism know if this part is still this black square and this is still the red square? Okay, so let's give that a try. I'm going I'm going to save this as a different file name. I'm calling it Sample Atlas Two. Press OK. So now I will drag and drop Sample Atlas Two to replace Sample Atlas One. The first question I will ask you is that what do you want to do with it? Do you want to a create a new model with the PSD or do you want to do something with the sample LS1 or basically it's the first model that the, the one is open up so if you open up a couple of files here they will, they will all be listed here and you can select um, what is this current PSD going to be uh, used in okay so currently we're gonna select the model we're in working with press OK and now it will ask you the second question is that so you have a new PSD imported. What do you want to do with it? All right. Um, there are three options. You can add all layers as a new art mesh, meaning that the red triangle and the white square will both be added as a uh, as two different separate new objects in. So we got the black square, the red square, the white square, and the red triangle all into the canvas. Now that's not what I need. The next one is register PSD without adding art mesh. So you add the white square and red triangle in, however, they will be whole new objects and they're not equivalent to anything existing here. Uh, it won't be a replacement, it will be an addition, except that it won't show up in the canvas just yet. You have to um, use them yourself. Uh, you can do multiple things with it, but I'll explain more later. So now we can have the replacement option and there may be more than three here. Um, this this part will basically list out all the existing atlases that is that are already established. The first time we do this, there's only one exi ex existing atlas. That's why we only see one. But after, if you re imported a couple of uh, PSD in, they will all be showed here with a timestamp. And that's why I want to change the name for the file because if they're all the same name, it's going to get a little bit confusing. You got to check the timestamp and all that. Um, if you got the name different, put the version number in, it will be much more convenient. So I'm going to select Sample Atlas 1 because that's what I want to replace. Now, th these Japanese fonts basically say that uh, to replace, all right, and press OK. So we're looking at one white square and we're looking at the red triangle and obviously we don't see the red square that was originally there because it will show through these parts right and to test if the things get matched or identified as a match we can move around the parameters because what we did to the red square uh, and the black square supposedly if they're replaced if the texture is replaced we get to keep all the parameter values, the registered movements. And as you can see, what we gave the black square is currently given to the white square, and what we give the, to the red square is currently um, in the red triangle. So we can see things are inherited. Um, the obviously, the rotation deformer is still the rotation deformer, except that it replaced uh, to the different child object. So this test experiment right here, we may not know exactly if that worked out, if uh, the properties of the red square has been inher inherited by the, the red triangle. However, the, the white square obviously has ad adopted everything, adapted everything um, that we gave to the black square. The grouping remains the same, except that there's currently a new folder called the sample atlas 2 correspondence Corresponding, corresponding layer not found okay so this folder right here um, is automatically created every time you imported a PSD an extra PSD um, what it does is that if the white square or red triangle or any objects that are new assets to the old atlas and Cubism doesn't, for some reason, it doesn't recognize any of those. They don't, it doesn't feel like, oh, this is a black square equivalent, right? Um, and, and Cubism is, doesn't not, it wasn't sure. He would put the white square 
here. And the black square was still, well, I don't know why it's still listed as black square. I guess the that's the name of the mesh, and that's the icon that is registered earlier. So these don't, these guys don't get um, updated immediately. Um, however, what I'm saying is that you will see black square, red square, and red triangle and white triangle in this folder because they don't get recognized. So they got um, grouped up into a backup folder where things are located. They will still be placed into the canvas according to your PSD um, positioning, uh, but that's it. So let's, currently we, there's no corresponding layer found because obviously they match it identically with the original two objects, so there's nothing here. Now let's go to project palette because this is where all the magic happens. The project palette basically shows all the assets you have for the project. For this model, you can have more than one mo it, essentially you can have more than one character in a project. You know, it's not the best idea to um, animate everything together because you know you only have one set of parameters. Unless you have like angle X for character A and angle X for character B, otherwise you won't do that. But but let's let's go on with it. Let's um let's understand the basic of it. Now we see sample image a folder, and there's a model guide image. Um, they look the same in at, in some point, uh, but they have different functions, and I'll explain more later. But let's see, first look at source image because this is a list where it shows all the atlases clearly in uh, groups and folders. As we can see, there's sample atlas 1 and there's sample atlas 2. Now, after we import a sample atlas 2, atlas 1 will have a extended um, extension at the back which says replacement completed. And atlas 2 doesn't have that until you add atlas 3, then atlas 2 would have it too. So all the ones that get replaced, it would have this tag at the at the back. And however, after you replace stuff, the original set of stuff are still in. So where are they? What happens if you delete Atlas One here? Like what happen if you what happens if you uh, simply replace the old one and on your computer the original PS doesn't doesn't exist anymore? What would Cubism handle it? Well, I've tested it and apparently Cubism will still continue hold the data and hold the images of the files that you once imported but deleted the source already. So they'll always be here and be found. What I can do is that I can right click and set and, and click uh, switch to current. Now this is basically allowing you to swap in be toggle in between atlases yeah so you can also delete it I guess but um, the point is that you can still have a chance to go back and check out what it used to be you know to confirm whether things are uh, changing accordingly you still have that option so keep an eye out for um, what ca what can you do in order to check with errors and uh, success of your replacement um, so we have replaced this, we have tested this. I guess this is all for this episode. For the next episode, we will talk about how to replace if... Yeah, we're going to talk about how to add new stuff, for sure. And we how do we replace manually instead of automatically. So this is a progress where we did a, um automatic replacement where we let Cubism identify the objects and take a guess of whether or not they're equivalent and then replace them. Because this is a computer and it's, making, it's taking guesses. What if it's not accurate? What if um, we have a complicated case where the, I want these two objects to be merged into a one single object? Or originally I had both in one layer, now I want to break them apart. Um, how do we do that? How do we create new meshes? How do we, uh, you know, what if I have, I want to make two white squares identical, you know, into the canvas. How do we do that within the part and project palette? 
Um, I'm going to talk more about that in the next few episodes. But now we have, in conclusion, we have、uh, learned that one thing is that even if you change the layer name, Cubism will recognize it. If you change the color, obviously it will recognize it. If you keep the name, obviously it will recognize it. But if you change the shape, it also does. Now I've tried cases where it doesn't. So we don't know exactly、um, the whole algorithm behind it. But、uh, in the case where you replace with a newer version of your character art, the source PSD, and the parts are not recognized. And they are thrown into this, you know, corresponding layer folder, and say, "Hey, I don't know what this piece is. Is this the front hair or the back hair? I don't know this hair piece. I cannot tell, and so I leave it here." So, what do you do next? How do you、um, transfer over what you've already done to the hair or the eyelash or the clothes? How do you transfer all those data over to a object that is registered as a new one? All right, there's still hope. Let's put it that way. All right,、um, but without finding, without being able to open up the atlas file, what? Yes, without able to open up this one and work with it in a PNG file in Photoshop,、um, how do we do that? Well, in general, is that Cubism 3.0 no longer want you to handle PNG texture mesh files. Um, individually in Photoshop, it wants you to rely fully on、um, Adobe Photoshop.、Uh, well, it wants you to rely fully on your original source PSD. All right, just update your PSD like an artist would do, and then re-import the whole thing over. Usually, you keep the name. Usually, you keep the about the same size of things.、Um, but don't worry about it. Cubism will be smart enough to do, give you a smooth transitioning, flawlessly. Match the equivalent parts, and in the cases where it doesn't match, there's still hope. There's still way to match things, fix things, and we will talk about that in the next few episodes.